All right. Okay, this song talks about a word that comes only three times in the Bible. Okay, it says, you are the sovereign I am. Okay. Actually, it's a word that is not there in the Bible, but it is there in the Bible uh, as Lord of Lords. Okay. But uh, some of the new translations like the ESP Bible has got his name as sovereign. Okay. What does uh, sovereign mean? Sovereign means that God is has the absolute supreme power to do whatever he wants. Okay, that's what sovereign actually means. Being the Lord of Lords, he has the absolute power to do whatever he wants. And nothing can stop the Lord from doing it because he has the power to do it. He is almighty God and that's why he's able to do it. So as we sing this song, let's understand that he is the sovereign I am. He's able to do whatever he wants because he has the power to do it. song which talks about the Lord who is Lord of Lords. Before they were styled 
Lord of all, Lord, you will be. We bow down and we worship you, Lord. Bow down and we worship you, Lord. We bow down and we worship you, Lord. Lord of all, Lord, you will be. You are King of creation and King of my life. Of the land and the sea, you were king of the heavens before they were stout. King of all kings, you will be. We bow down and we crown you the king. We bow down and we crown you the king. We bow down and we crown you the king. Kings, you will be. You are Lord of creation and Lord of my life, Lord of the land and the sea. You were Lord of the heavens before they were sky. Lord of all, Lord, you will be. We bow down and we worship you. We bow down. We bow down and we worship you, Lord. Lord of all, Lord, you will be. We bow down and we crown you the King. We bow down and we crown you the King. We bow down and we crown you the King. King of all kings, you will be. Lord of all, Lord, you will be. All right, over to Abana. She's going to lead us in prayer. Let's pray. Oh God, Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful time you have given us, God. Thank you for bringing all of us together for another fellowship, another Thursday YFC fellowship, God. Thank you for every one who has joined us today bless each and everyone especially bless um, manichatan so that he can fill him with your spirit so that he can deliver what you want for us to know thank you for everything you have been doing for us in jesus name we pray amen amen Okay, check. I hope you can hear my voice clearly. Right? Okay, so. Okay, this is an activity that we're going to play, which involves us to draw. Okay, a little bit of drawing is there. So you need a paper and a pen or a pencil or something like that. Okay, so you need to have a pen or uh, your diary is all okay. But then you know too many drawings in your diary can actually dirty your diary or if you're a if you're a bad artist but then if you want to see what what we did in this game and you want to remember it later on that's fine so you can use your diary no problem you can use your notebook uh, uh, that's that's allowed but if you think that you want to dirty a piece of paper and that's all that you want to do for this game that is also welcome so you have to get your own paper i will give you just 30 seconds for that and you have to have a pen which is very clear so that you can actually see what you have drawn in your paper okay right so before we go into the game let me give you the rules of the game the rules of the game is very very simple i have an object with me and i will give you five clues about the object okay i will give you five clues about the object and from the five clues you have to draw that object in your paper that's all okay you can't unmute yourself and tell me what the object you can't shout out what the object uh, is uncle can you say again yes yes i will tell you the rules again okay you can't shout out what the object is that means you will be disqualified for the next round okay you will not be able to play one round with that okay if you shout out the name of the object which i have with me right so i will tell you this object i will describe it with five clues and you have to guess what that object is and draw it in your paper Simple, right? Suppose I'm going to say, you know, uh, I'm going to say this paperclip that I have. Okay, it's a paperclip. 
So I will say like, you know, uh, it's an objects, object that's used to hold paper. Then I will say, you know, it has got a metal handle. And then I will say it's got a metal base. And then I will say it is somewhat triangle in shape. Okay. These are the things about my, my paper clip. And as I'm saying these clues, you have to Hello, imagine what that thing is. Shut up. Yeah. Okay. So you have to guess what that thing is and you have to just draw it in your, according to how I describe it, you have just have to draw it in your paper. And finally, we'll see what you have drawn and what I thought. Okay. So we will compare it. And if you have come anywhere close to what I have said, that object, then you will get 100 points. Okay. So yeah, it's, it's a lot of points. Right. So. Uh, let's see what you can find out with the clues that I give you. So five clues to tell you what the object is. You don't actually need all the clues to draw the object. If you can guess it, maybe first or second clue itself, you can start drawing your object. But don't show it. Okay, don't show it. Um, uh, at the end of the round, when I say all the five clues, you can just tell me, you can just show the picture on the webcam and show me what was that object. All right. If your object is correct, you will get 100 points. Sometimes when the clues keep going on, you might change your mind. The object that you started drawing at first may not be the object. Keep that object there. Don't tear it off or don't cut it off. Just make another drawing of the object that you now think is. You cannot, you cannot try, right? So I can draw twice or twice, right? You can draw five, seven things. Yeah, yeah. You can draw as many things as you want. But if I yeah, yeah, surely you can draw uh, as soon as the fifth clue is over. I will give you another 10 seconds to finish your drawing and then I will ask you what the object is. So you have to show me what you finally think that object is. Okay, all the other things that you drew does not matter. The final thing that you think finally that is the thing you will get the points now. I will also give you what a benefit. If, what if we draw the right thing, but then you cannot, you, but you, when you see the drawing, you don't think it is that thing. Yeah, because, uh, uh, yeah, the, because I will ask you also, you know, is that what you drew? <laughs> and if you think, I will say what the object is. I have, you know, I, I will say what the object is that I brought. So if I brought the right object and you drew the right object and you had in your mind, this is the object that you're drawing. The drawing does not show it, but you think it is that object. You can always give yourself that 100 points. Okay. Now, I will also give you one additional bonus. If the object you drew in clue number two is actually correct, but then you thought differently, you misunderstood me and then you drew something else. If the final drawing that you show me is something else, but you did recognize the object in clue number two, I will give you that 100 marks. Okay. So even if you make a wrong drawing in your understanding, if it was a wrong drawing and you corrected yourself, but the drawing is there in your paper that you previously drew and you're able to show that, okay, I did draw what you showed me. Paperclip was there, but then I changed my mind later on because I was confused. If you drew the paperclip, something like a paperclip before that, I will give you the 100 points. Okay. So it's always a win-win when you play the games, right? So everybody wins. All right. Let's see. Object that I have brought is almost two feet two and a half feet long. Okay, the object is a long object. It is almost two and two and a half feet long. Okay, long. Get what I'm long. long okay. So, uh, you long. covered two clues or it is one clue? Pardon me? You covered two clues or it is one clue? I didn't get you, Joel. Uh, you said that it is long and uh, uh, what? It is two, two and a half feet. Two and a half feet long object. Yeah, okay. So that is one clue, right? This is the first clue. Yeah, okay. Okay. The object is made of wood. Second clue. Object is made of clue. It's two and a half feet long. It's made of wood. Third. It has a joining of a somewhat of a circle and somewhat of a long beam. Somewhat of a circle and somewhat of a long beam. Okay? The, those two joined together is what this object is. Fourth clue. This object has steel wires or strings bound on it. This object has steel 
wires or strings tied tied on it and fifthly this objects makes a lot of music all right so five clues two and a half feet long and made of wood somewhat of a circular and beam kind of thing joined together has wires or strings tied up and it makes a lot of music five clues guess the object hey i read it so will you ask yes. everyone to show it or no no you can actually show it in your webcam whatever you have drawn okay. yes atul is showing me uh, can you bring it closer atul oh yeah that's it and jo hey, is it enough yeah yeah that's more than enough that's a beautiful drawing yes okay yes joel and joan have got me the right one <laughs> i, I, I have drawn it back uncle i have drawn it back yes it's a, is it a guitar yes then if you've drawn a guitar that is the right answer he yeah. said the answer yeah i know but then after after they started showing it so she thought i won't understand what the object is but i can make out those who have drawn the guitar is a cute and actually we had it also sign it in the somebody wrote there as a guitar jo wrote it over there yeah okay. yes yes uh, it's like a cat it is like a cat isn't it sign a drew a guitar abel drew that okay jonathan you got me a beautiful guitar okay that looks like a ukulele yeah, but it's correct only really. yes So the instrument is a guitar you have got the right answer and you can give yourself 100 points all right now now i'm going to turn the tables on you you have to get one object okay <laughs> no but then you didn't have the time you see uh, <laughs> you had to draw it and show it at the end of the final clue so after that time only everybody gets to show their object so you don't have enough time to change the drawing you just have time to show us the drawing okay so let's see you get one object i'm going to start with abel abel is going to take one object and he's going to give us five clues about that object and others are also going to get one object and you have to take an object which is very simple and which can be explained in five clues plus everybody should be able to guess what that object is at least you know it's not going to be very hard so get an object which you can give five clues and write down the five clues that you would like to share with the others so that they can find out the object right immediately take an object and write down the five clues that you can share about that object and then we are going to ask one by one to just tell us the clues and we will draw the object and show you what it is uh, uncle can you say what you just said again i couldn't hear yes it. i will tell you again you have to get an object and you have to make five clues on that object which you can share to the other members of this group okay any object which is simple not very complicated uh, don't don't get some things that we have never seen in our life you know <laughs> don't get those things get things which which are familiar with the people and you have to make five clues in your notepad or book or something and then you have to show us the i mean you can you have to read us the five clues and we will guess what the object is and draw it in the paper and show it to you our artistic creativity is going to overflow today yes <laughs> all right okay abel is going to start and then we are going to go over to katherine then we are going to go over to uh, jonathan and then we are going to go to michelle okay so this is the order abel uh, katherine uh then jonathan and then michelle okay then i'll tell you the names as we go on okay let's start with abel i hope everybody is ready yes uh, joel and joan you can do that but the problem is your sister will already guess what you have brought so <laughs> okay we can tell you yeah okay one. so so that particular round she will not be asked to you know answer that question when Now, you are okay, sitting that's No, that's the only way we can solve this manager uh, can you pick up someone else i yes, need sure. a bit more time you need a bit more time okay catherine can you be ready five clues okay yes so we start with catherine and here we go catherine is going to give us an object 
Okay, clues from Catherine. Everybody, please pay attention. Here we go. It is made of plastic. Made of plastic. Okay, think about all the plastic things. Let's go. Second. It has a cap. It has a cap. Third clue. Um, it is available in blue or black color. Yeah, you keep yourself muted. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Then. <laughs> is the I answer correct? Muted. Yeah, I know he was muted. <laughs> but uh, is the answer correct, Catherine? Yes. Yeah, yes. Okay. So Joshua is this okay. I know. That's very uh, unfortunate. Auntie, should we draw what the other's uh, clue is also? Uh, yeah, you have to draw this object. For, okay. Once you get the f five clues, you have to. I, I actually started drawing a. I thought it was a water bottle. So I drew the cap first. I drew yeah, the me too. Blue. I me, Amy and me almost thought it was a water bottle. Yeah. Then I was like blue and black. Yeah, then she said blue and black. So I thought it was a pen. But then it came over the speakers yeah. that she, Joshua kept shouting that it was a pen. So yes, he's disqualified for this one round. But we are going over to the next person. And the next person is Jonathan. I need some time to think. You need some time, okay. So, Michelle, are you ready? No. No, okay. Anybody who is ready with five clues? Okay, I'll, I'll just pass it on to. Yes, Atul is ready, so I'm going to give it to Atul now. All right. Clue number one from Atul. It's a thing that we used to write our oh. notes. Okay, something that you use to write your notes. <laughs> Second is, it is used for smaller kids to use. Small kids. Okay. Like LKG to for it. Okay, yeah, we got it. Yeah. And it sometimes it will broke. Sometimes it, it will get broke. Okay. Next clue. And we need and we need to remake it again remake with it. the thing. All right. I think I'm getting it. Five clues, right? Oh, uh, one more? No, five. Yes. Okay, those of you who have finished it, you can show your drawing and the drawing is yes, Catherine is correct. A pencil. Yes. A pencil. Is it a, a pencil? pencil? Yeah. Uncle, I did not need to draw it because for the last round they drew it already. Okay. Yeah. Joe, you must remember not to shout out the name of the object. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. some of them are still drawing only. You should only yeah. show your paper and let them yeah. see what it is and try to guess what you have drawn. Yes. Uh, pencil. Yes. Correct. Answer is pencil. Atul, correct? No? Yes. Yes, the object is pencil. Anybody who drew pencil gets 100 points. At last we get a point. Yes. Okay. Next person, uh, Atul has got, uh, yeah, because you were successful in telling us, you get also 100 points. The person who successfully communicates the five clues also gets 100 points. All right. So next is, uh, who's there? Soumya Biju, who's that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anton. Right. Yes. Can you? Uh, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you very clearly. Start with the clues, guy. The object uh, usually has a circular portion in the middle. A circular portion in the middle, okay. Yes, uh, on top of the circular portion, it is always covered uh, with a transparent object. Usually covered with a transparent object. Okay. It has... Uh, uh, two long portions on each side. Okay. Uh, in the middle, there is one stick which moves. There are uh, usually three sticks okay. in the middle. One stick moves fast. One stick moves uh, 
slow and the other stick moves very slow okay very good okay so that's five clues guys anybody has got the answer you have to show the paper to the uh, screen yeah. yes michelle has got the answer pasted on the webcam joel and joanne has got the answer yes where's mine i can't see mine yes 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 okay abel has got his drawing anybody anybody has got that drawing yes catherine has got a drawing Sina has got hers jonathan has found his and marina has found a yes the right one i think that is the right one <laughs> marina's is the right answer and dia has got a right one yes i think marina is the most accurate all right let's let's find out from the host what is the object what is the object uh, anton watch or a clock watch or a clock but you said watch right because you said there is a long thing on either side yeah but now i think that there is clock so scrap like thing okay yeah so it can be a clock but i think the exact answer exact what he that is watch yes exact is watch so marina gets uh, i think she should get uh, 150 points for that because she is the only one who drew a watch the rest of us will get 100 points and yes anton thank you yes anton uh, gave us a right object so he gets 100 points yes next uh, who else who is ready let's see let's see who else is ready uh, ibana are you ready i am ready who is that who is that me uh, marina is ready I have all the rules. It's rectangular. It's square. No, well, not me. Don't say the answer. Okay, I see the question. Don't. Okay. Uh, who was say? Who said it? Open it on two sides. It has a magnet on both sides. Joe, we can hear you. <laughs> yeah, Joe, we can hear you. You have to mute yourself. It has a P. Yes, Joshua, you ready? Okay. All right. He's back in the game. He is disqualified for one round, but he's back in the game now. Yes. Your object. Your five clues starts now. First clue. Yeah. we could press the top of the object you can press the top of the object yeah okay second uh, now all this uh, it is used very frequently oh okay nowadays it's used very frequently uh, it is filled with a liquid the third clue filled with a liquid oh. okay fourth clue uh, we could buy the object You can buy stores. it from the shop. Okay. Uh, finally, we could refill the uh, uh, liquid inside. That's it. Okay. What What was the first clue you said? Uh, we could press the top of uh, the object. Okay. Okay. Wow. All right. So that's the object. Well, I didn't get the points because I thought it was a ballpoint pen. That's not the right answer. I also thought that. Yeah. <laughs> I think. Yes, I Atul has got it. I thought it was a flick pen. Flick pen. It is. I think. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. 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 Yes. I know. Yes, Joshua. Is it a sanitizer? No. No, it is not a sanitizer. Okay, what what is the object? Is it it's a liquid soap? Liquid soap. Yes, okay. I thought it was soap, and I actually thought of soap. writing soap, but okay. I did not tend. I just wrote sanitizer. Yes, correct. but the clues were very much close to sanitizer also. So I think we will give uh, definitely fifty points to all those who got sanitizer. But the liquid soap is what he thought about, and so we get everybody who said liquid soap. Uh, you get hundred points. Okay. I not I did not uh, write liquid soap anyway. I thought it was soap, but I thought of using it as a sanitizer. Oh, so your soap uh, bottle has got sanitizer inside it? What a strange combination! Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so Joshua gets hundred points. Yes, I'm Michelle. ready. Your Michelle. Michelle is ready. Let's see how your Michelle uh, clues. How much questions did we do till now? Uh, I think we did one, two, three, five. four, and mine. Mine was five. Six. So five questions so far. All right, over to uh, yeah. This is the fifth question, right? The fifth question, but one question was disqualified. The first one uh, that Catherine Catherine shared uh, was disqualified. So actually, we didn't we did only four 
so far all right uh, yeah, yeah no problem there you if you think uh, that's uh, if you see somebody drawing it and you draw it that's also fine because drawing it in the 30 seconds is a big challenge you can't do it anybody can't do it right so show the drawing as soon as you finish it all right here we go next question goes to michelle and she's going to share the clues over to michelle okay um the first clue is that it is a compound it is a compound like element compound compound okay it's a compound it's a mixture of more than one thing okay uh it's a liquid it's a liquid okay it has no color no color oh strange okay soap is its best friend soap is its best friend hmm. okay and you should have it daily you should have it daily okay. have a lot of it daily okay. right uncle i have drawn it it is wibbly wobbly near to the ocean actually it is the ocean all right. It is the ocean. What? Water, water. We drink. Okay, Joe, what? you are disqualified for one round for saying the name of the object. You should only show the object. Mm -hmm. We have to tell whether the thing <laughs> looks like that, okay? Right. So, anybody who has drawn it, yes, uh, somebody, Atul is showing me a hammer. Is that a hammer? I think it's a jug. It's a jug. Can I tell? Yeah, yeah, you can tell. It's a jug of water. Oh, it's a jug of water. Okay. So, water is correct. I think water is filled right. with water. Glass. I don't know how to draw without water. Without a jug. That's that's okay. Because as long as you intended water, it's fine. Okay. So, Uncle, mine is a glass. Michelle, is the answer water? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, everybody who drew water gets 100 points. Okay. Joe, you get 100 points, but you're disqualified for one round. Because you said the name out loud before others were drawing it okay so over to who's next abel are you ready all right abel is ready let's go over to abel now ready this is a rectangular this is a thing in rectangular shape okay it has a lot of keys oh okay and a lot of buttons a lot of buttons okay Keys, switches, 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 switches. Okay. okay. It needs electricity to run. Oh, so it's a runner. Okay. And it produces music. It produces music. All right. Where is it? Can't find it. Okay. Correct. Okay, correct. Let's see who else gets it correct. Yes, Dia has got it correct, and uh, Atul has got it correct. It is correct, right? Yeah, I think it is. Yes, can I tell? Catherine has got it correct. Joel and Joanne got it correct, and uh, Michelle got it right, and uh, Marina got it right. Jonathan is correct. Okay, let's see who else. Joe got it right. Oh, but he's disqualified for this round. Okay, yeah, Aaron got it right, I got. and uh, uh, Anton got it right, yes. All right, those who got a keyboard or a piano, it's right, okay, electric piano, because it runs on electricity, it should be either an uh, electric keyboard or an organ. Keyboard, right? Keyboard, yes. Yes, keyboard. radio. Oh, you thought it was a radio? Okay. Yeah. All right. So one last I thought question. It was, I thought it was a keyboard you use in the computer. Yes. Last Jonathan is ready. So I'm going over to Jonathan for the last round. Let's go over to Jam. Don't lose heart. We will uh. continue this game next week. And others who have got their objects will get a chance again next week. Right? So here we go he, over to Jonathan. Uh, he said first, uh, the, uh, the first clue is the, it's, it's a triangle. It's the shape is triangle, right? Rectangular shape. He said rectangle. I had triangle. triangle. I still, you got it right, so it's surprising. Yeah. Everyone drew the piano, so I also copied it. <laughs> okay, so that's that's the power of uh, you know uh, the internet. You can actually copy other people's drawing. Yes, Jonathan, over to you. Clue number one. 
No number one, it has a sensor. No number two, it so has a it, goes, so it has oh, no. got a sensor. Okay, it yes. has got a sensor. Okay. Flow number two, it has a wheel attached to it. It has a wheel attached to it. Okay, yes. sensor with a wheel. Right. Flow number three, they are mainly of two types. They are mainly of two types. Yes. Okay. Flow number four. If we move, if we move it when it okay, is uh, on, what do you mean by two makes... types? We, you didn't get that. Give that clue correctly. The third clue. Uh, what do you mean by two types? You mean solid and liquid, or no, both no. solids. Okay, but uh, there is a different different type available. Yeah. Okay. 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 Both Something... are different type. One has an extra part. One has an extra part, and the oh. other one does not have. Okay, one has an extra power, other one doesn't have. Okay. No, extra part. Extra and part. part. Okay. Yes. One has an extra part, the other one does not have an extra part. Okay. okay. Not getting any clues so far. Yes. Okay. Can you see all the clues again? Yeah, I yeah. forgot everything. First one, start from the first again. First clue, it has a sensor. It has a sensor. Second clue, it has a wheel attached to it. It has a wheel attached to it. Okay. Third clue. They are mainly available in two types. Okay, two types. One has got an extra part, the other one does not have it. Okay. Thank you. Fourth one. Fourth one. If we move it when it is on, it makes another thing. Uh, when they move it when it is on, it makes when it is when it is on ah. and we move it, it makes another thing move. It makes another thing move. Yes. Wow. Okay, wow, this is a strange object. <laughs> it needs power to work. It takes power it to work. It needs some sort of power. Okay. Can it's, it's, show you? Are you sure can we can find this? You have to show the picture. I... Those of you who have finished. Makes power from a battery or? Okay, uh... electricity or power from a battery. All right, those who finished, don't say what the object mm -hmm. is. Just show your picture on the screen. And uh, Jonathan will tell you whether the object is correct or not. Whose is correct, Jonathan? Can you find out whose answer is right? Uh, um, Atul's answer is right. Atul's answer mouse. is correct. Okay. It, it can be av available as wireless and with wire also. Okay. 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 Some people. Can I tell? Wait, what is yes. that? It is a mouse. It's a computer mouse. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, Joe, you're wrong. I think Joshua is also wrong. You both drew cars, no? I do a robot. You do a robot. a robot, okay. With the head, Okay. Joel and Joanne, you drew a car and then you drew the mouse. Yes. Those who draw the mouse is correct answer, and you have drawn mouse. That was a mistake. I don't know how actually to draw a mouse. <laughs> but you did draw the mouse, so you get hundred points definitely. My mouse looks like a weirdly. Shape and crushed chapati. Yeah, I didn't even draw anything. You should be lucky you got it. Yeah, I also didn't draw. I was like, can we even find this thing on Earth? <laughs> I thought it was an alien <laughs> object. Yes, I also thought I couldn't find this object. First, I thought it was a camera, but then I thought it can't be a camera. So, totally confused. Okay, oh, awesome. That was a I was like wrong. drawing a sensor, then drawing a wheel, and then trying to connect everything. But then, exactly. so yeah, I also did that. That's why I think Joe got the car, and somebody else also got a which, car. Joel and which Joel. question this is? Joanna. Wait, Joanna, sorry. Which question Joanna. is this? One, two, three, four, five, sixth that, question. That. Seventh question. This is the seventh question. All right, so everybody who participated, you get some points. Let's find out who got the highest points. Now. All right, points, please. Joe? Uh, total of 650. 650, wow, that's an awesome score. I got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six points, 600 points. So, Dia, how much did you get? 450. 450. Atul? 700. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, Abel? 450. 450. Joshua? I didn't add the mark. You didn't add up, okay. Catherine? 600. 600. Joel and Joanne? 600. 600. I got 450. 
Four fifty and six hundred. Okay, Jonathan. Six fifty. Okay, his was the most. Can we add R? Yes, yes. Can you can add R yours. R you can add yours also. Then it. Seven fifty, right? Then it's going to be seven fifty. Yes, Saina. Six fifty. Six fifty. All right, Anton. I also got six fifty. Six fifty, Michelle. Seven hundred. Seven hundred, Aaron. Three hundred. Wow, Marina. Six fifty. Six fifty. Okay. Anybody else attempted? I got six hundred. Wow, that's awesome. Hey, we didn't see your pictures. Show us your pictures. <laughs> Where are your pictures? <laughs> <laughs> wow all right there is a whole collection out with out there yes you, which all question did you get correctly you got the pen uh, right? uh yeah i got everything except the last one i am technologically handicapped <laughs> to understand that question <laughs> yeah that was a real difficult one that jonathan gave us yeah in no way did he tell us that it is connected to the computer in any way so i was thinking about different things yes just, just couldn't make head or tail of uh, what he was saying but i'm i'm really amazed at uh, those guys who guessed the mouse and that is i was surprised when he showed the mouse picture and their minds are out of this world yes yeah they 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 think alike you know great minds somebody said great minds think alike so yes i got it at the last minute which explains why my mouse looks like a chapati <laughs> yeah i know the mouse looks like a chapati yes i thought that atils i thought that atils uh, mouse looked as a taco <laughs> taco, yeah. What? That is actually it's like uh, from the Taco Bell. Yes. Yeah, one of my favorite right. restaurants. Okay, so let's turn our Bibles to where we are in the Gospel of Luke. Keep your diaries open, your pens ready. Yeah, and we are going to study a small passage from Scripture in Luke chapter eight on some of the rocking women. Okay, women who were on the rock. Jesus is called the rock. So, these women were very, very much fixed on the rock of Jesus. Luke chapter eight, verses one, two, three. That's all. Three verses. But yeah, we're going to we're going to go a little further also. But then we'll first finish this passage, and then we will see how we can go. Luke chapter eight, verses one to three. And let's look at the women who were on the rock. Soon afterward, he went on through cities and villages, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him, and also some women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's household manager, and Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their means. All right. So we're talking about Jesus and his ministry in Israel. Okay, now Jesus undertook two major trips all around Israel. Okay, he undertook two major trips all around Israel, and the third trip was the final trip. He went directly to Jerusalem, and there he was crucified. Okay, so the two trips actually covered most of the cities and villages of Galilee and the surrounding places. that was his two trips around israel and then the final trip he went directly to jerusalem and there he was crucified okay you will find the first trip in luke chapter 4 verses 42 to 44 luke chapter 4 verses 42 to 44 lot so many fours there okay So Luke chapter 4 verses 42 to 44 gives you the first trip when Jesus starts the first trip. It says and when it was day he departed and went into a desolate place and the people sought him and came to him and uh, would have kept him from leaving them but he said to them I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns as well for I was sent for this purpose and he was preaching in the synagogues of Judea. So that's when he started Luke chapter 4 how much uh, verses how much 44 two okay. verses. I mean that was the start of his first journey. and right from there you know you will see his first journey and then here in luke chapter 8 verse 1 he goes on the second journey right and then towards the end of the gospel of luke that is when jesus starts the final journey 
the third journey towards Jerusalem, where he will be killed. Yes, Dia. Uh, which was the second trip? The, the, chapter eight. trips that Jesus had. He went all around Israel preaching and teaching. What was the message? Uh, Proclaiming. Uncle, yeah. I didn't hear it went out for a while. Uh, Luke chapter 8 verses 1 is where his second trip is. Luke okay, chapter 4, 42 to 44 is the first trip. Okay. And then, so what was his message? His message was he was proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. See, the kingdom of God, Jesus is the king of that kingdom. And the good news is that God has come among them. God is now among them. He has come as a human being. He's walking among them. And that is the good news of the kingdom. God becoming man, becoming one among us. And the kingdom of God was being proclaimed. Jesus' kingdom was being proclaimed. He was the king of the kingdom. And that is what he was declaring you know, to everyone that he met on the road. So that was Jesus doing his ministry in Israel. He went through all the cities and villages. Wherever he went, he proclaimed the good news of the kingdom of God. So this was the second trip that Jesus uh, tour, tour of whole of Israel. Now, who all were with him? See, in the first journey, that is chapter 4, verses 42 to 44, the disciples, the 12 of the disciples, the apostles were not yet chosen they were, they were there with Jesus, but they were not given the special role of apostles. No, so they were there with Jesus, but they were not the special twelve at that time. But here when he went for the second trip, they had already been chosen as the twelve had been uh, you know, already given their responsibility. So they were there as the twelve. That's why it says here, and the twelve were with him. Okay. So the twelve were not chosen as the twelve during the first trip. Maybe all of them were not there together with him. But here, definitely it's mentioned, they have already been chosen. They have been designated as uh, apostles. So, these twelve were with him during this journey. And then it says, And also some women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's household manager, and Susanna. So, three women are specifically named, but there were other women also. Okay, says uh, and uh, and several others, many others who provided for. Them. So, which means there were other women also, but these three were prominent leaders among the women. Who are they? First two is called Mary Magdalene. And what is the what is what is the unique thing about Mary? Out of this woman, seven demons had gone out. Okay, so in her there were seven demons or angelic uh, beings which were enemies of God. Okay, there were seven of them inside one woman. Wow, that is amazing. No. So, uh, some people think that she is the woman whom we studied about last week, who came and, you know, wiped his uh, feet with the hair and all. But there is no proof in the Bible of that. That was actually a woman who was a prostitute. But here, the Bible does not say that Mary Magdalene was a prostitute. Nowhere in the Bible do we get the picture or any reference that Mary Magdalene was that prostitute. Only thing the Bible says is that there were demons inside this woman, seven of them, and Jesus actually cast those demons out. And because of that, this woman was always following Jesus and serving him. Okay, So nowhere in the Bible do we get any picture that Mary Magdalene was that prostitute who was there in the previous chapter. And she's not mentioned as a wayward woman or, a, you know, or, a, or an evil, wicked woman who was once trans. No, she was only thing the Bible speaks about her is that she had seven demons inside her and was um, released from that. Okay, So how did people, you know, most of the Jesus movies, some of them actually show Mary Magdalene as that person who comes and wipes his feet and all that. Which is not correct according to the Bible. It is not said anywhere in the Bible that she is that lady. Okay, this is just for your information. Then, secondly, we find another lady called Joanna who was the wife of Chusa. Now, Herod was the king of that land and his household manager means he is having a top rank in Herod's, Herod's um, administration. He is the one who takes care of the palace needs. He handles a lot of money dealings inside the Herod's castle, you see. So, he's a very important person in the Herod's administration. And his wife, Joanna, was now following Jesus. Okay. 
maybe she was also healed of evil spirits infirmities means sicknesses maybe she was healed of some sickness by uh, which uncle, was, can i yeah. ask you a question yeah you sure what is joanna's husband's name chuza c h u z a is there in verse 3 okay chuza he is the household manager of king herod okay so that's a big big uh, post in the administration it's a big big post in uh, in herod's uh, you know uh, of officials so he is an official in the king's palace and he's looking after the uh, the uh, financial things in the palace so he's a very trusted official in the who is it who chuza his name is chuza verse 3 you'll find it in chapter 8 verse 3 the man's name is chuza and his wife joanna was the one who was following jesus because maybe she was healed by jesus or maybe she was also set free from evil spirits so she was following and the third person that's mentioned here is susanna okay susanna but no no detail about her is given uh, but okay. uh, yes uh, can you see uh, how what a uh, chuza was in uh, herod's palace he i was not here he was an official uh, who was taking care of the palace okay, okay so uh, king herod's palace so household manager that's what it means so he takes care of the things maybe you know uh, like uh, getting new sheets for the kingdom to, for the palace Or you know, taking care of the palace, right? Taking care of the palace. Taking care of Herod's palace. Herod's palace. Okay, so he's called as the household manager. He takes care of the business inside the palace. Now, <coughs> now, if you look at Israel in general, those days women were not qualified, or they were not mentioned as people who are. first class citizens okay or normal citizens of the country they don't have any role in administration they don't have any role in official duties women were actually considered as not even second class third class citizens we said that sometime back also you know they uh, the the normal jewish pharisee would always thank god that he is not a, a gentile he is not a dog and he is not a woman okay so that's the kind of view that israel had towards women they had a very negative uh, outlook about women and they did not allow women to do anything in public and they definitely would not uh, be able to uh, speak to a pharisee or a person who is a religious person in public that was the role of a woman in the jewish circles but what is mentioned here is something totally different from what it was the common practice that is why luke makes a note of it he says they were the people who were supporting the ministry of jesus the women were the people who were supporting the ministry of jesus how from their means see these women were employed they were doing some other job and from that job what they get as a salary from that a portion would go to support the ministry of jesus wow that's amazing so these women supported the ministry of jesus there were other people also but the bible actually records that these women supported the ministry of jesus okay so it shows you how different jesus's attitude is towards the women see it was different from the other rabbis rabbis were the teachers you know jesus's attitude towards women were totally different from the other rabbis see jesus did not give them an inferior place in the ministry Jesus actually recognized them as one among the 12 you know so, uh, like just like how the 12 people the apostles were these women are also oh, following Okay what is the spelling of rabbis Rabbi R A B B I okay. okay so here Jesus was giving them the equal importance just like how he gave the 12 apostles they were also following Jesus where he went and they were also supporting Jesus's ministry Jesus never told them hey you ladies should not be following me you know that puts me in a bad light what will people think of me when they see you girls following us uh, you know bunch of guys you know and you sh- you should actually go back to your home and you know take care of your home only don't follow he never said that he encouraged them to follow and he taught them also see a rabbi would never teach the women but jesus taught the women also see so he never gave them an inferior place in the ministry in fact he actually thankfully received what these women provided 
for the support of the ministry. See, so he was humble enough to be dependent on the support of these women. See, he didn't have do, done that. No, he could have actually uh, made a lot of money by himself. You know, he could have created the money, and he could have created the food also. And he could have said, "I don't want to depend on women." But Jesus was dependent on their support. Jesus was dependent on whatever these women provided. Maybe they provided with food. Maybe they provided with money. Maybe sometimes you know they, they went and stayed in the houses. We don't know. But however it was, he was dependent on these women. That that is something very humble about Jesus. Now you should always understand uh, that. Uncle, yes, Joe. Jesus was uh, dependent on uh, on the women, right? On the support of these women. On on support of these women. Okay. Yes. Okay. So. Uh, Uncle, can I ask you a question? Yes, Misha. Do you know all these women that were healed by Jesus? Pardon me? You know all those women who were healed by Jesus? Huh. Uh, uh, like they were not supposed to be there then? They were not supposed to talk? They were not supposed to? Uh, who, who was not supposed to what? I didn't get you. The women no, who were healed by were Jesus? Were they not supposed to be there? And like do what they did to get healed. Huh. Uh, they were not supposed to be there. They were healed by Jesus only. I didn't get your question correctly. I think you're. Uh, no, I mean like you know that woman, like for example Mary Magdalene. She was huh. healed by Jesus, right? Yes. And like she, she, she was probably in public when she was healed, right? Correct. So then, um. Was the was she not supposed to be there because she was a woman? No, no, she could be in public, but the what the rabbis said was, you know, they could they would not be seen talking to a woman in public. What is that? No, bad? Yeah, that only the rabbis. The other people could speak to the women. They had no issues. Like uh, you know, the the uh, ordinary man could talk to a woman in public. That is no problem. But when a rabbi or a teacher speaks to a woman in public, that is shame on the teacher. You know. So his reputation, they'll say, "Oh, look at that teacher; he's talking to women. That's bad." But Jesus was even talking to prostitutes. Jesus was speaking to, you know, the, like the previous passage we saw, a woman who was a prostitute coming and cleaning the uh, known woman. You know, everybody knew her as a wayward woman, and she she was coming and wiping the feet of Jesus. That was like, it would have been a scandal. People are thought, like, how could Jesus not understand what kind of a person was that? That's what the Pharisee also thought. You see, so for a rabbi. They would not want any scandal, so they would keep far away from women. If a woman tries to approach him with a doubt or something, they'll say like, "Hey, don't ask me any doubt. You go home." And how will women get saved? I mean, like, if they have any doubts, are they just supposed to live with it? Yeah, see that that is what I'm trying to drive at today. Okay, so uh, it was impossible for the woman to actually learn the word of God. It was very difficult, and uh, the, the, even when they come to the temple, they have a different place where the women can assemble for worship. and they should not mix with the men the men are supposed to be separate and men cannot be uh, you know uh, uh, men would not encourage the women to take up roles in the service of the church or service of the synagogue none of the women were given the, any any position in the synagogue they were not given any 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 service roles in the synagogue but it was very difficult it was not impossible but it was very difficult okay now you should always remember i will come to that person later on but there were women who were godly and who was doing their service in the synagogue okay i will come to that point later on that person we have already seen her in the gospel of luke uh, in chapter 2 i think okay chapter 2 and chapter 3 yes i i'll go back to that okay but let's let's finish this first so <clears throat> what i wanted to do to say was see giving actually puts a person you know in our in our view it puts a person in a higher place and a person who is receiving will always be in a lower place uh, uncle can you say uh, what is said now again yeah, giving and receiving can you say again yeah i, I didn't finish saying it. Yeah, i'm just saying it a person who is giving is seen in a higher light so oh that person gives and another person who receives you say oh that person is always receiving 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 see so the receiving person is on the lower place and the giving person is on a higher place see that's how people see it but Jesus was humble and godly enough to receive from others. See, it did not put him in a bad light. It did not put him in a lower light. It actually shows his greatness that he received from others. 
and he also received from women that puts them very humble and that puts the the light of godliness on him even more brighter you see so it is not a shame to receive from others if somebody wants to help or if somebody wants to help in the ministry it is not a shame to receive from them yes dear can you repeat it yes i can repeat it what i meant to say was usually giving puts a person in a higher place and receiving some gift or money or support puts a person in a lower place but jesus was humble enough to receive from others to support his ministry so that shows his humility that shows how humble jesus was and also how godly he is he did not lose out on any godliness because he received he because he was dependent on other people see so that that's what this verse tells us that these women he was dependent on the women he was dependent on other people who were supporting in his ministry he had no shame in receiving from them see what what was their benefit see they uh, had yes uh, but jesus was uh, humble enough for what uh, happened to another human here to receive from other people okay, okay? so uh, what did they receive they received blessings from god no jesus had blessed them jesus had healed their sickness jesus had taught them the word of god teach jesus actually was teaching them over a period of time so they had been blessed by the ministry of jesus so they wanted to help him so they wanted to give to the ministry and that jesus received it you see so it was not because they wanted to you know uh, they wanted to know that you know uh, people should appreciate them and say oh you know that person he gives to all these things you know this person is a great person because he gives to everybody you know who comes with a need no that was not the intention of these women they did not want to have their names you know on declared like oh our great sponsor mary magdalene or our great sponsor joanna no she did not want uh, they, these ladies did not want their names to be proclaimed like that they gave it very much in secret and they gave it very much selflessly supporting the ministry of jesus you get the point so it was uh, jesus uncle, received can it i ask yes. you a question yes mission did you know these good things these women were doing did uh, their husband know about it i would definitely say uh, yes chusa knew about it because see if they had known that these women were delivered from sicknesses and uh, these women were delivered from demons i think definitely the husbands would be supportive yeah because uh, see uh, otherwise uh, a sickness cannot be hidden you see you can't hide a woman's sickness for a long time and uh, if she's sick she's not able to do anything in the house she's not able to support the husband and the husband will look at the wife and say what am i going to do with you uh, you you're, you're suffering and you know you're not able to do anything for the family also it puts a lot of pressure on the family and now when the woman is healed and she says to the husband you know you know i i was healed i was healed by the ministry of jesus so the husband would also say yes if you want to support the ministry of jesus i am also with you because i have been blessed through it you have been blessed through it directly so i would rather support the ministry of jesus now i want to also see, help you see that uh, these women uh, luke chapter 24 okay take down luke chapter 24 and verse 10 these were the women who were witnesses to jesus's resurrection they were there they were the first people to see jesus resurrected and get the news at least you know Luke chapter 24 I'm going to read that Luke chapter 24 and verse 10 <clears throat> Luke chapter 24 and verse 10 Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and other women with them who told these things to the apostles you see I'm going to see what is said for uh, Luke 24:10 can you the, see the women uh, among them were Mary Magdalene and Joanna were the first people to actually witness the resurrection of Christ okay so that that gives you how important their following was see none of the apostles were there when jesus resurrected in fact these women were the first people to go and tell them the good news that jesus has resurrected see so the first evangelist you would say you know, was a woman so she went and told them the good news about jesus resurrection mary magdalene did joanna did see so their following was definitely with the knowledge of their how you know husbands and the husbands also supported but it was the wife's decision to support okay that's that's what i wanted to tell you it was a wife's decision they were people who were working and they had to get salaries and you know that salary they would actually provide a portion of that to the ministry so so every every person is accountable to give to the ministry but i'm what i'm saying is that jesus was not 
you know like the normal rubbies he did not say i don't want women women's money i don't want women's help no he never said anything like that he received it with all humility so that is how jesus uh, ministry was different his approach to women were different his attitude towards women were completely different now i will give you an interesting uh, thought okay it's an interesting thought if you read all the four gospels you would see that all the enemies of jesus were only men there was never a woman who was an enemy of jesus's work okay so that that also you know that's also contrasted with this passage why right? because now you see women following jesus but there were no women who were against jesus so that that shows how how his teaching had touched the lives of these women okay so they were totally blessed by jesus and that is why they were ben- they had benefited from the work the jesus ministry and that is why they were supporting the ministry of jesus now i want to just focus on a passage in the new testament which talks a little bit about women in the church okay because we have women in the church i i think most of your sunday school teachers are women so they are they are qualified to teach let's look at um, romans chapter 16 in your bibles turn to romans chapter 16 it's just after the book of acts romans chapter 16 apostle paul the missionary he has written this chapter 16 and in that he has mentioned many women who are actually helpful in the ministry they were both personally helpful to paul and they were actually doing great service for the church of jesus uh, uncle romans chapter 16 was how much i didn't say the verse i'm going to tell you the verses one by one there are a lot of verses oh, okay. here we go verse 1 let's start with verse 1 i commend to you our sister phoebe a servant of the church at sencrea c e n c h r e a e okay that's a place so there is a church at a place called sencrea and there is a sister phoebe who is a servant of the church wow and paul says i commend to you okay and then it says in verse 2 that you may welcome her in the lord in a way worthy of the saints and help her in whatever she may need from you for she has been a patron of many and of myself as well here is a lady who has supported the ministry of jesus christ he has supported the ministry of paul of the church in the first century and paul says i commend to you she is a great lady and i commend to you welcome her just like how you would welcome uh, you know uh, john and peter and me welcome her also why because she has done so much service to the kingdom of god she has done so much service for the name of jesus christ you see so she is a person who is commended a servant of the church of sencrea that's a woman so paul commends this lady then come to verse 3 says greet prisca and aquila actually this could be the same prisca uh, there is a mention of a, a person called priscilla and aquila in the book of acts okay so it could be the same people only because they are always mentioned together a husband and wife team who has been a great help for paul priscilla and aquila okay priscilla and aquila priscilla is the wife aquila is the husband the names the spellings are there prisca it's mentioned prisca here and aquila but uh, the acts gives you the name as maybe it's like a pet name you know paul was very friendly with them so she called the prisca but her name full name was priscilla and priscilla and um, aquila okay. now always you will find in the bible whenever the husband's name is mentioned the husband's name is always mentioned first and then the wife's name but here is the only place where bible actually mentions the wife's name first and the husband's second wherever this couple is mentioned in the book of acts wherever they are mentioned in the book of romans also they are mentioned with the wife's name first which may be because she was the most prominent person in the in the among the couple she was the more uh, you know uh, more uh, of the teaching type and she was a person who was you know doing the majority of the work that could be the reason why she is mentioned first so priscilla and aquila paul calls them fellow workers in christ jesus verse 4 who risked their necks for my life they took great risk for paul you know they are like so courageous paul says they are like you know my own people they are like my own people see and he says to whom not only i give thanks 
but all the churches of the gentiles give thanks as well wow this this is a couple whom the churches are looking up to who is at priscilla and aquila they are a team that paul says i really admire they have risked their lives for me they have put themselves at risk for me and i i really appreciate them not only me but all the churches of the gentiles they all look up to this couple you know, excellent leaders there a lady is mentioned that is priscilla so there are a couple whom paul gives them thanks now next person next verse um greet also the church okay greet also the church in their house greet my beloved apennetus who was the first convert to christ in her. then it says verse 6 greet mary who has worked hard for you okay. now we don't know which mary this is this could be mary magdalene okay, we don't know but this is actually in rome so it could be a different mary and this mary has no surname we only know that her name is mary but paul calls her a person who has worked hard for the church in rome see she is a person who has worked hard for the church in rome sister mary okay who i don't know who that mary is but she is a hard worker so women are mentioned as hard workers women are thanked for their courage okay this is you know if you look at first century israel this is something that no israelite would do but paul is thanking them why because church sees women differently church doesn't see women how israelites saw the women the church has to see women differently jesus never separated between man and woman and you and that no jesus actually recognized them so paul also recognizes them let's go down to verse 7 greet andronicus and junia see junia is again another woman whom paul is actually recognizing and paul says my kinsman and my fellow prisoners she helped paul when he was in prison junia was a lady who helped paul when he was uh, in jail see so he says my fellow prisoner so they all supported paul in different areas of ministry maybe give by giving him food maybe by giving him clothes maybe by giving him uh, money we don't know in all these ways these women were very supportive of the ministry and they also taught like priscilla and aquila i'll come to that priscilla also taught you know so let's look at the next person before we skip uh verse 12 uh roman 16 verse 12 greet those workers in the lord tryphena and tryphosa two ladies tryphena and tryphosa and then continuing on says greet beloved persis who has worked hard in the lord see all these women have sacrificed their life for the service of the kingdom of god and paul is thanking them you know paul is saying greet those workers in the lord you know just like how paul would uh, you know recommend timothy or titus or uh, luke or any other person who was helped him in the ministry he is saying greet those people who are workers of the lord tryphena tryphosa pers beloved persis who has worked hard for the lord okay so these are women who have given a lot to the kingdom of god and paul is encouraging them paul is thanking them paul is greeting them in this letter okay then if you come down you will find um, um, a lot of women again mentioned there but then i want to just turn the focus to another person see in the bible we started out with luke chapter 1 mary singing a very beautiful song i hope you remember that right we call it mary's song or the magnificat and if you look at that it is not uh, you know mary is not a person who is illiterate in the word of god she is a person who knows the word of god and her song is filled with references to what god has done in the past to israel see so she has heard and understood the word of god which has been taught to her see so a person who is learned in the word of god she is the one who is singing out that song of praise to god remembering all the things that god has done to israel in the past so mary is a person who edifies us with her song the mother of jesus okay she her song is still sung in the church today her song still instructs us today it is there in the bible it is recorded her song has been which, recorded in the bible which was something is luke mary. chapter 1 luke chapter 1 luke chapter 1 verse 46 to 55 okay 
Okay, that is Mary. So her words actually encourage and build us up. Then there is another person. I told you I'll tell you about this lady afterwards. That person is found in Luke chapter two, and verse thirty-eight. You'll find this lady Anna. When Jesus was taken to the temple to be dedicated, Luke chapter two, verse thirty-eight. You'll find this lady who was waiting to see the deliverance of Israel, and he she saw she saw Jesus as the baby. And then she, what did she do? In verse thirty, it says, um, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of Him to all who are waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. So, so these women actually encouraged those people who are waiting for the Redeemer of Jerusalem, see, for the Savior. So she started teaching them about who Jesus is. She said, "I have seen this baby, and God has come among us." See? So Mary encourages us. Anna, the prophetess, she's called a prophetess, and uh, she has been a person who served in the presence of the Lord in the temple, and she was also a worshiper. See, that's how the Bible describes her, prophetess Anna. Uh, uncle. Yes. Uh, uh, these women actually encouraged uh, what, uncle? I did not hear that part. Yeah. Mary encourages. Uh, Mary, the song of Mary encourages us still today. We have we okay. sing it in the church. Okay. okay. And Anna, the prophetess, actually encouraged those people who listened to her about okay. Jesus. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> then, in Acts chapter eighteen, Acts chapter eighteen and verse twenty-six. Okay, Acts chapter eighteen and verse twenty-six. Now that talks about a person called Apollos, a mighty preacher who went around teaching in Corinth boldly. Okay, as a mighty man, his name was Apollos, a great preacher in Corinth, a place called Corinth. Now, what happened was, when he was preaching, Priscilla and Aquila, Paul's friends, they heard him preach, but then they understood that he was not presenting the gospel of Jesus Christ clearly. So, what did they do? They invited Apollos home. Bible says. They explain the way of Jesus more clearly to him, See? and now Apollos got the full picture. Now Apollos got his facts right, and then Apollos became a very, very useful instrument in God's hands as a preacher. Okay, so who corrected him? Who explained to him the way of God more accurately? Priscilla and Aquila. Priscilla is the wife. Aquila is the husband. They brought him home. And explain to him the way of the Lord more clearly, and then they understood the gospel. He really understood the gospel, and then he went out and preached the gospel clearly. He became a very powerful tool in God's hands. Acts chapter eighteen, verse twenty-six, is where you see Aquila and Priscilla instructing Apollos. Okay. All right. This is just some of the people that I wanted to tell you about. Now there are more people. Okay. You can find them in the book of Acts, Acts chapter sixteen. There is a lady called Lydia. The Bible says the Lord opened her heart to listen to the good news that Paul was preaching. God opened her heart. Lydia was a faithful person. She was a seller of purple goods. Purple is one of the most expensive, you know, uh, material in those days. Only king kings would be able to afford things made of purple. You know, the color purple, the dye. It's a special dye. So here was a lady who was a big businesswoman. She was selling, you know, uh, clothes dipped in purple dye. She was actually selling to royal people who had a lot of money. And this lady was listening to Paul preach. Purple was a dye that was very difficult to get at that time, and yes. it, it was expensive because it symbolized royalty. Yes. Okay. So here was this woman. She was listening to Paul preach. And then the Lord opened her heart, and she was able to understand the gospel. She put her faith in Christ. So what happened? She, the Lord opened her heart, and she opened her house. She said, "Please come home," and she invited these missionaries home. And the church in that area, in Corinth, was at um, sorry, um, the church in Philippi was actually meeting in uh, this lady's house, Lydia's house. The church in Philippi. Was meeting in Lydia's house, so the Lord opened Lydia's heart, and she heard the gospel. And Lydia opened her house so that people, other people, could come and hear Jesus. 
other people could come in here paul preach about jesus see so she opened her house and the church was meeting in her house there are other people also in whose houses the church was meeting okay a lot of women who are mentioned in the bible i don't want to list out all these women but i just want you to know that in the first century it was a very very radical change that the church brought that jesus brought through the lives of these women women who were servants of the kingdom of god they were hard workers they were courageous workers they were selfless workers who did great things for the kingdom of god and paul appreciates many of them you would find some of them in the in the book of philippians you would find a, a person called euodia and sintishi very very freaky names i don't want you to write them down but philippians uh, under, uh, what, which was in the word these names you know, you will find it in philippians i'm not giving you the verse i'm just saying that in the book of philippians there are two ladies who are mentioned who paul says they worked side by side with me okay what is paul doing paul was sharing the gospel and these women actually worked side by side with him yudia and sintishi timothy was a man who was paul's disciple but timothy was brought to god to jesus christ by two women his mother and his grandmother bible says their names also lois and eunice lois was the grandmother eunice was the mother both were godly people and they told the gospel of jesus christ to whom timothy young timothy when he was a young boy he was trained in the gospel by these two women they taught him the word of god and because of that timothy became a great leader who was helpful to paul in the ministry see so women had a great role to play in the church and jesus actually appreciated them he was humble enough to receive from them and he was he also revealed when he was resurrected he was the first person uh, to see him resurrected was women and they were part of the ministry you would see them mentioned throughout the scriptures as people who partnered with paul in the ministry okay so this was very scandalous you know we can't speak like that uh, during the during those days women would not be considered equal to men but here god has made them you know uh do this work and we are blessed to be uh, seeing their work in the church so what i want you to use to see is that you know we uh, the church does not see women as inferior to the men no the women have a very prominent role to play they are called teachers they are called even some of them are prophetesses in the new testament they are called to preach the word they called to teach the word and they have a role to play in the church and jesus does not see the role of a woman as lesser than a man's role he sees them as men and women who are called to serve the lord side by side okay that is his, that is his uh, observation that is his understanding attitude towards women okay so let's not let's not also see women as second class citizens or third class our culture has this habit of seeing women you know as inferior to men which is not biblical which is not the way the word of god has been preached to us so let us thank god for women let us thank god for the way the role that god has given them to play in both families and in the church and let's appreciate that god is also using women just like how he's using the men let's pray and then you can ask questions heavenly father we want to thank you for every one of us who are called and chosen to be your servants whether it be men whether it be women god has a role for each one of us to do in the body of christ and help us to find that role and do it to the best of our abilities to glorify your name to thank you and to worship you because you are the one who has purposed it in our lives father we give you all honor and glory teach us also to honor the women in our family in our homes people who are around us help us not to see them as the world sees them in jesus precious name we pray amen